Okay, one other thing I want to demonstrate is that this is actually useful for a variety of sound samples, sound libraries. And you actually see here I've got Vienna Ensemble queued up and ready to go, although it's uh, not running quite yet. I mean, these are actually the default Sibelius sounds using the GPO. But let's go ahead and actually switch to that. I do have Vienna uh, on, the, on this computer, and I've got a sound set um, that uh, I use. And so let's go ahead and see if this will play back with Vienna. Hmm. That doesn't sound so good, although these first four or five sounded pretty good. Why is that? If we go to Edit Instruments, you'll see that Sibelius is trying to find a, um, a sound, and you'll actually see it here. If Sibelius has found a sound that works with your sound library, you'll get a name. Um, and we see the Tam Tam, we see the Low Gong, Medium Low Gong, Medium Gong, Clash Symbol, Ah, here Sibelius has not found an exact match in the Vienna library. Instead, it's doing what's, some, what's called a sound ID. And uh, we won't get into that too much, but essentially it's a generic way of identifying uh, sounds. And Sibelius, what happened is Sibelius didn't quite find a symbol roll crescendo. It probably just found a symbol, and so it found the next best sound. But there actually is a tremolo roll in, um, in Vienna. It's just called something a little different. And it's actually called, whoops, it's called, well, it's called suspended symbol roll, or let's use one that crescendos a little slowly. That way we can actually define that. Same thing here. It doesn't, it's not called choke in, in Vienna. It's called, let's see, it's called damped, suspended symbol damped. So it's close, but not quite. Now it should play back. Same thing here. We'll choose the sound instead of, um, I think it was just called crash symbol in GPO. It's actually called suspended symbol here. Okay, so with a little bit of alteration, we actually should get good playback now with Vienna. Let's hear it. Okay, so look, this is a brief tutorial on using percussion maps. Uh, we obviously haven't covered everything, but between this and Daniel's excellent tutorial on the Sibelius software side of things, uh, it should at least give you some confidence in using percussion maps uh, more extensively in your work. So thanks again for watching.